just as an addendum to my previous video about the uh, air conditioner, I did want to mention briefly that I did add some insulation pads to the sides and underneath the bottom. So some of you were talking about, I think some somebody mentioned insulation or something. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. Quick fix, but it works. Anyway, to the topic of this video. Hey folks! Today we're going to take a look at this Prime Systems computer. You may have seen these on UXW Bill's channel. They're a uh, Socket 775 Corcher Duo base machine that a guy on eBay has been selling for a little under $50. Uh, I think he got a bunch of his for like 38 and I got mine for 45 from the guy. So the guy raised his price a little bit, but that, that's honestly fine. For that price, to me personally, that's a, free, that's a case with a free computer in it. So that, that's kind of nice. Um, I've tried to film this video several times, and unfortunately, new developments keep cropping up, so I think, hopefully this time is the final one. I've actually done some work to this computer already. I just took the motherboard out and put another one in, but I'm about to do that yet again in this video. What I ended up doing is putting a, a, a Sandy Bridge motherboard in here, um, while I thought I was going to just be using that. Uh, but it turns out that it's going to get something even better than that. Uh, I'll show you the original motherboard that was in this thing. Here it is. It's an Intel motherboard. Not sure the model of it. Um, it says Intel desktop board there. Uh, but this is the board that the system came with. It's a fairly nice board. It has built-in firewire. It uh, has a PCI slot. It still has, um, I think that's IDE. Yeah, it still has IDE on it, which is kind of nice. So. This board's definitely worth keeping around, especially with all of these SATA slots. Look at all of those. Six SATA ports on a board like this. So this is definitely a board I'm going to be keeping around um, as a spare for something like the transfer PC in case that board ever goes bad. The I.O. on it's pretty good, though. You get uh, DVI, VGA, you get built-in firewire on the back, you get a bunch of USB, your audio, and Ethernet. You know, it's a sta pretty standard board in that regard, but having the built-in firewire is nice. That's something you usually only see on AMD boards from the time. And, uh, yeah, I tested this board and it does work. Uh, this is the original hard drive from the machine. It has a C It's a 160 gig Seagate Barracuda 7200.10. Fairly fast hard drive, but it's, the 160 is pretty small, so I swapped that out for something else. This is also the original DVD drive, uh, which is a light-on drive, and I really don't like those because uh, the trays don't always work forever on those. For example, like you try to op you try to open the drive and it just won't open. Uh, they have issues with that. So what I ended up doing was replacing both the drives. The hard the 160 gig hard drive was replaced with a 256 gig SSD. And the original optical drive was replaced with the Sony OptiArc DVD burner that I had. These Sony drives seem to work pretty well, so uh, I have faith that that one will work pretty well. I did end up putting a few cards in here, so yeah, there is that. There's a video card in there. That's a GT730, 2 gig version, which is the crippled one, unfortunately. I put a wireless card in there and a FireWire card because the Sandy, the, uh, Sandy Bridge board I put in here does not have built-in firewire. Um, what else can I talk about? Uh, yeah, this motherboard I stuck in there. It's an eight, one of the, my Gigabyte H61 base boards. But that's coming out, and we're going to put something else in it. I'll show you what that is fairly shortly here. This is what is going into the Prime Systems computer. It's funny, I was talking with UXW Bill the other day. And um, I was saying something along the lines of, I should get Amazon Prime to buy this Asus Prime motherboard to put in the Prime Systems computer. Well, I'm two-thirds of the way there, so I decided to get this board. It's a Sokka 1151 B250 based Cabby Lake motherboard, part of the Asus corporate stable platform type of thing. So it, it looks like your ordinary OEM board you'd find in one, one of Asus's commercial desktops or like something you'd find in an OEM machine. So it looks very similar to the old board that came with it originally, which is kind of nice. It, it looks pretty original. I managed to get a one 8-gig stick of Dell RAM off of eBay for about 
2133, so it's fast enough to be useful. Um, this, I put a Pentium G4560 into this machine. I managed to get one of those on eBay as well for around $70 or so. Uh, not much more than it was new retail, so new they cost about eighty two dollars as of the, me making this video so i think i got a pretty good deal on it considering the time and uh... i managed to get find this cooler that i still had uh... one of these i think it's i forget who makes these uh... but it's a nice back pl screw down backplate based cooler hopefully it fits in this case um, i replaced the power supply with a rosewill one uh... let's cut to some footage about that right now Okay, I pulled the power supply out of this whole thing. It's pretty bare now. It's an Allied power supply, 275 watt TFX, but it's not really a full TFX. It's like a mini, tiny version of it. I don't know. It, it's kind of strange. I'll, have to com I'll compare it with another power supply I have and show you. Uh, but as you can see, the ratings are pathetic, especially on this 12 volt rail. 13 amps. That's gross. That's pathetic. Uh, the one that's replacing it is a 16 amp. I also found something interesting on the inside. There is a domed capacitor down there, if you, right down there, if you can see it. Yeah, that's not exactly ideal. There's the, the domed capacitor right under the circuit board. So, this guy is garbage. Total garbage. And this is why I bought a new power supply for it. I wanted to replace it. You know how things were in the 2000s. <laughs> so, there's that. The replacement is in this box here. And it is a and it is, a, is so much heavier. Is it that much heavier? Yeah, it is actually. It's way it's a, quite a bit heavier than the other one. It's a Rosewell 300 watt power supply and the, the 12 volt rail in question has 16 amps instead of 13 so it's a little bit better suited for the job and uh... looks like it's got two SAG connectors on it which is nice i think this one only had one so it's a little bit more modern and ready for the job uh, so we're gonna put the rosewell power supply in there now as far as size differences let me show you that real quick here are two, the two power supplies that I have together. This is a full-size TFX one that was pulled out of an A-Open computer. And as you can see, it's full-size. It's a little bit uh, more boxy. This one, on the other hand, is a much slimmer one. And this is something you'd find in, like, a Dell or something like that. And um, as you can see, it's quite a bit slimmer, and it's also not quite as long. Um, it's just generally a much smaller power supply, and that's why I went with it, because that is all that fits in this case here unfortunately. That's the one caveat with this Prime Systems case is that it only fits those smaller uh, TFX power supplies. It's a very subtle difference in size but it's enough for it to be a difference and for this one not to fit or else I would just use this one here. Yeah so after that footage needless to say the original power supply needed replacing because not only was it worn out but it had a bloated cap and I just don't trust that. Not only that, but this has a little bit more juice, which makes me a little bit happier. So, let's take you for a tour around this board a little bit. It has a pretty good I.O. It has um, your PCI Express slots, and it has a regular PCI slot, which is very important to me for this machine because of the FireWire card. Uh, as far as other things go, it has a bunch of SATA ports. It has six SATA ports. Two here, two here, and two here. It has USB 3 for the front. Um, what else we got? It has headers down here for parallel and two serial ports. So this thing has really good legacy I.O. support. The I.O. on the back is pretty fantastic as well. You get your audio, you get a, some USB 2, some USB 3, Ethernet, um, HDMI, DisplayPort, DVI, VGA, and PS2. So the I.O. is excellent on this board. Uh, so it should do excellent as a little uh, pal around computer like this. Now the Pentium that I put in here has Intel 610 graphics, which are kind of terrible. So I had ended, I ended up putting a GT 730 in this machine, and I think I'm going to put it back in uh, just because just to give those graphics a little bit of a boost. 
Um, and obviously that card isn't for gaming. That's just so a few 3D things work fairly well. Uh, this is not going to be a gaming PC. Uh, so, you know, there you have it. Uh, as far as the drives go, this is the SSD I chose. It's a crucial 250 gig SSD that I had lying around. I decided to stick that in there and mount it very, very shoddily with one screw. So it's an SSD, so it really doesn't matter how badly it's mounted. So we're good there. Um, so that's essentially what I've done with this computer. Um, I bought this on eBay for the case because it's a nice long small form factor case that's a very businessy case as well. Uh, came with a free computer in it, then has a motherboard and a CPU that I'll probably keep lying around. Um, and it makes a great case for a computer that I need to set up quickly somewhere, if I need to deploy it or if I just need to use it. Um, this will be a nice small computer to just have around for the odd case that I need another desktop, uh, which sometimes happens. So. Yeah, there you have it. 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, got your optical drive, so it's around if I need to use it. Um, so I, I guess there isn't really a huge reason for building this other than to uh, get a bunch of my systems on DDR4, even if it's only 8 gigs of it. But I like these Pentiums, and I really wanted to see what a Pentium could do, so I decided that this would be worthy of a video, so, you know, let's check it out. Plus, I'm upgrading more machines as we speak. My uh, bedroom PC is being upgraded, too. And uh, so is the sleeper. So, lots of computer videos on the way. But this one in particular is about this Pentium-based system. This is more about the Pentium itself than anything around the system. It's a nice motherboard, don't get me wrong. But I want to see what this Pentium can do. So, I'm going to stick all my hardware back in. And uh, we'll uh, see what this baby can do. Okay, so here's the setup. I took the wireless card out because unfortunately it's regular PCI. So I can't exactly put that in there. I think I have a USB wireless adapter somewhere I could use until I get a proper PCI X1 card, PCIe X1 card to use for wireless that I could stick in one of those two slots. In fact, I do think I have one in the cube down there, so I could probably use that. But I put the FireWire card back in, as you can see. And uh, it has a. This is a card I bought on eBay for about five dollars. It came in a Dell or an HP or something. Has a header on the inside so that it allows the port on the front to still work, which is really nice. This means with this machine I could do, um, you know, capture of DV video from a video camera, which is mainly what FireWire is used for in, in my house. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, man. It it really is. So there you have it. Uh, what do we have in here? We have... So that's the final setup. I might add a wireless card to this, but that's nothing that's really video worthy. I stick the card in the slot and it behaves like a wireless card. There you have it. So, yeah, that's the setup of this machine. I think, um, I think I'm going to button this thing up and uh, eventually I'll film the software portion of this video and we'll see what this baby can do. Um, thinking I'll stick some sort of Linux on here just to give it a test to see how it runs. We'll see what this thing can do for uh, normal use. Obviously, it's not a gaming computer, so I'm not going to run a bunch of like gaming benchmarks on it because that's not what we're here for. That's what Random Gaming and HD's channel is for. So, you know, we're going to see what this thing can do once I get it back together. So, anyway, before I blabber on more, let's uh, let's go to the next segment of the video. Okay. I've uh, I have messed with this system a little bit more. I got another used. I got a used RAM stick this time. The Dell stick was new, and I and it's a Samsung stick. And the other stick that I got here is another Samsung stick, but it's from an HP. So a bit of a mishmash there. So this has 16 gigs of RAM in it now. There's the GT730. I added the TP-Link wireless card to it as well. So it's back to the same configuration it was that I originally planned it with. So there you go. I also installed Ubuntu on here, so we'll take a look at that as well and look at it running. Okay, I have a little setup here for the uh, Prime Systems computer with its Cabby Lake board and everything now. Um, I've tested this. I stuck a wireless card in it, a TP-Link wireless N 
card. That way, um, this thing actually has the full functionality. I didn't really need it in my other derp top case, the, that little Rosewell cube case uh, I made a video of not long ago. That has a that also has a Pentium in it, ironically enough. But I stuck it in here so it'd have the full functionality as a nice modern desktop. Uh, what else did I do to it? I tested it, I installed an operating system on it, and all that works. I also updated the BIOS on this whole setup, and that was very weird and very aggravating, actually. Um, I was poking around that BIOS going, where do I update it? There's no easy flash utility, there's nothing. Normally on Asus boards, you get the easy flash utility, as those of you who built with Asus know. This, not so. This one is a bit of a blast from the past. On this particular board, the B350M-C, I think, is the model number, or dash C, CSM, whatever. Um, uh, the way you update the BIOS is a blast from the past. As you boot, you hold, hold Alt-F2, or you press Alt-F2. And that takes you to a flashing utility that's built into the BIOS. And what you have to do is download the BIOS file from Asus's website, and stick that on the root of your USB stick, or a USB stick. And um, then you stick it in, you boot into that special flash utility, and then you select your BIOS file, and it'll flash it. So it's pretty old school. That's the, ki that's the kind of BIOS flashing stuff you, I, that you used to see back in like the late 90s and early 2000s. So it's a pretty old school board in that, in that way. I like the board in every other way but that. I wish the easy flash utility was on here, but... Whatever. I mean, it works. The only reason I updated the BIOS was to get a microcode update for the Cabby Lake Pentium, because the Cabby Lake CPUs have a hyper-threading bug that uh, can cause some corruption. Um, but some Debian people actually saw it uh, when they were doing GCC stuff. Luckily, that's been patched now, at least with this particular board in mind. Uh, so I updated the BIOS to remedy that issue, and now... That now I did, probably won't ever have to update the BIOS again, assuming it's not buggy. So let's turn it on and get into the BIOS. Hammer away that delete key. This Dell monitor, by the way, I picked up at a Goodwill recently, and it's a great little 15-inch monitor. Um, really nice monitor. Uh, bright backlights, everything. 1024, 768, 15-inch. Perfect for uh, vintage computers, which is mostly what it's probably going to be used for. I've been using it on this system just to test the monitor, actually. But as you can see, anyway, this board has a very standard American Megatrends BIOS. It does have UEFI in it, of course, because it's from 2017, but the BIOS looks very old, which is kind of nice. I, I, I like BIOSes like this. Um, as you can see, that image of the BIOS is from July, so it's pretty new. There's the Pentium there, along with the RAM. Uh, it's a G4560 at 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, this Pentium has hyper-threading as well, so it's essentially an i3, more, more or less. Um, there's the 16 gigs of RAM that I've installed, running at 2133, of course, because it's just cheap RAM, cheap slow RAM. This board lets you adjust some things here to do with the CPU and RAM and whatnot. You have a ton of options here, including uh, virtualize enabling hyper-threading and virtualization and whatnot. And it shows you everything to do with this CPU, which is really nice, including the signature and the microcode patch, along with what's supported it. This, this Pentium, as cheap as it was, supports VTX, which is nice. So I could run a virtual machine on here if I wanted to. PCH stuff, onboard devices, APN. It's one of Asus's corporate stable boards, so it has a lot of features. One of my favorites is the HDD Secure Erase. Essentially what this does is it runs the ATA Secure Erase command on a drive, and that's really nice for wiping SSDs and hard drives. It takes a lot less time than D-Band does, and is pretty much just as effective. Here is the cooler. Here's how that cooler's doing. It's, it's that uh, cooler that's a socket 1156 cooler, funny enough. Works great on the Pentium, though. It's keeping it nice and cool. Um, power supplies voltages look pretty good. Nothing that too out of spec there. It's brand new, so shouldn't be a problem. Um, 
I have, for Linux, I have this thing set to legacy only for everything. Nice that you can still do that. I've noticed, though, that I can't turn secure boot off on this board, which kind of annoys me. I wish you could do that. Because, for example, if you try to launch an EFI shell from a USB drive, it doesn't let you because secure boot is there. I think that's because it's a corporate stable series board. I'm not quite sure, but either way, I don't like that as much. But yeah, there's a brief overview of the BIOS. It's pretty well featured. It looks old, but it's well featured. So, let's boot into an operating system. That cooler gets a little loud. There's the VBIOS there. Asus, in search of incredible. There goes Ubuntu running off of the 250 gigabyte SSD. That was really fast. Alright. As you can see, it's running quite well. Resolution's quite small just because of this monitor, but I can show you everything anyway. There you go. Recognizes the Pentium and sees all four cores there. Well, two cores, four, four threads. Ubuntu 16.04.3 um, has a newer kernel now, 4.10, so it's new enough for Cabby Lake, I think. There's all four cores there. Uh, there's your 16 gigs of RAM and all that stuff, so it's working pretty well. It's a very snappy system, too, I've noticed. I've been installing software a little bit and just using it, and it's a very, very quick machine. These Cabby Lake Pentiums are definitely no slouch. Um, especially for the price. They used to cost like 60 something dollars and now they're up to about 82 I think for the 4560. Even at that price that's not too bad. Um, what I would, what, where these will shine I think is if you buy used ones like I did. I bought a used one for about 70 dollars and stuck it in here and it does a very very fine job for itself. The way I tested this thing is just general usage and for general usage these Cabby Lake Pentiums are fine. They're, they're excellent. Absolutely excellent. And uh, I'm sure they would be with Windows as well, but for Linux, they, sh they're, they shine. They're very, very good. So, I would like to say kudos to Intel for these Pentiums. I really like them. Um, despite these Pentiums cannibalizing the i3 market completely, <laughs> they're very good chips either way. So, definitely a very nice build to have around. This will be nice if I have to deploy a system somewhere, or I want to bring a system with me to... Um, to somebody's house or whatever. It's a good spare system to have around. Um, I like these ca I like these Cabby Lake Pentiums. It's, it's like the Pentium dual cores were in the Socket 775 era all over again. They're just really, really excellent for the money and um, for what class of processor they are. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah. Not a whole lot to say. I mean, it works. It works very well. It does anything you'd expect a computer to do and does it quite well. Uh, I haven't really pushed the GT730, but that, that, that's not the best graphics card in the world. And, uh, but I think it's, it's a little bit better. It's about 50% better, according to benchmarks, than the Intel 610 graphics that are built into this chip. So it, it's no slouch. I mean, it does the job. So there you have it. That's a little video of this build. Uh, it does quite well for itself. Uh, very excellent machine, especially for the money. Uh, that's a nice upgrade from the Socket 775 stuff that was in this machine before. Uh, this brings it up to modern standards. It gives it some of the legacy I.O. back, especially on the corporate stable Asus board, having the headers for parallel and serial. That's excellent. I really like that. Um, that way, if I ever need to use it, I can. So, there you have it. That is the Prime Systems computer. Nice, fun little build to have, and I think it'll be nice to keep around. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little build here, and uh, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.